Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Sherrod Mubarak, MD. I'm a physician here at West Broward Internal Medicine in Tamarack, Florida, and I practice general internal medicine or primary care medicine, if you will. I wanted to talk with you today about primary care medicine and what does it mean. So let's say you are here now in a doctor's office and you're seeing a physician and let's say they're an internal medicine doctor. How does that doctor fit into the world of medicine and what should you expect from your visit? What is that doctor really going to do for you? To understand that, we need to go back and talk about some basics. So, for example, everyone knows MD and DO. What do those stand for? So it's a medical doctor and doctor of osteopathy. These are two branches of medicine going back some time. So the medical doctors, that's my area, are allopaths. The DOs are osteopaths. Now the very truth of it is that the two merged some years ago and the medical schools that used to be quite different for each and now have converged and mostly, if I can say this, the DOs came to our side. They don't really do much osteopathy anymore and so these have really merged into one. And whether you're an MD or DO, for the most part, the treatment's going to be the same. There's also homeopathy, and that exists only to a small degree in the United States. It's mostly in France. It's more based on a different concept of medicine, and I'm not going to really talk about it at all. So now that we know we're going to see an MD or DO, we're pretty much going to get the same treatment in the United States. We should talk about primary care medicine. When did this come about? This was created to let people know they're seeing someone that's going to take care of their general health. Within this structure, we have the general practitioner, we have the family practitioner, and we have the internal medicine doctor. General practitioners really for the most part don't exist anymore either. GPs existed many years ago when specialties really didn't exist. You came out of medical school and you had one year of rotating internship and then you went into the world and practiced. And for the most part, everyone decided that this was too little experience. And if there are any GPs left, they're mostly very, very older people, old people who really have been practicing for a long time. Uh, but new graduates for primary care medicine are family practitioners and internists. Now I'm leaving pediatricians out, pediatrics, because here I'm mostly talking about adult medicine. I'm not talking about people younger than 18. But they would also, of course, be considered primary care doctors. Now what's the difference between the two? Family practitioners have a mostly three-year residency program. Of course, that's after four years of medical school and four years of college that prepares them for that. And they treat a whole gamut of arrivals. So they'll take care of newborns, they'll take care of infants, of uh, toddlers, of teenagers, of young adults, of adults, of middle-agers, and of seniors. So when I had a choice to choose between the two, because I always wanted to be a primary care physician, back then we didn't have this term, this was created later, to make things simpler, I chose internal medicine. Now, in my present practice, I really don't see many people under age 50 just because the way things turned out, but I could treat someone up to 18 years of age. So now you're in an internal medicine doctor's office or family practice doctor's office, and what is that all about? Why are you there? Well, typically, you're there to take care of a small problem, let's say, at the beginning. Maybe you go there because your knee hurts. But really, our job is to, of course, treat the immediate problem, which happens all the time, but then to take that patient in do a whole review of systems, do a whole history evaluation, their allergies, their social history, their family history, and try to develop a medical record, then approach that person in terms of preventative care and in terms of their whole needs. So let's say they are 50 years of age and there's a family history of heart disease there. So of course, we're gonna to look to see 
if we can reduce the risks of heart disease in that person going forward. And at least in my practice, most people come and stay for years and years and years. So I have actually had the opportunity to see a great-grandmother, grandmother, daughter, and then the, the fourth generation of that person. And then that really gives us an opportunity to treat the whole family, both from a social perspective and a medical perspective. So that is why primary care medicine, as far as I'm concerned, is really the important part of healthcare for anyone entering the healthcare system. And in a subsequent video, I'll talk about the entry into the healthcare system and all the specialists that are involved and why primary care medicine doesn't just do preventative care and care of acute problems, but goes on to try to orchestrate all those specialists, whether they be surgeons or internal medicine subspecialists or psychologists or ophthalmologists or uh, really the, the breadth of medicine has gotten so large that I can't even list all the specialists that we refer to today. We act as the orchestra director, maybe it's a lofty term, but I really think we do that primary care medical doctors don't just do preventative care, but they manage the overall health of the patient and all the referrals that are involved to get a better outcome from the complex medical system that we have. I hope you join me for the other videos and I hope you have a wonderful day.